Input Validation in Python. This lecture will cover how we do input validation in Python. So data types. We're not going to validate strings other than to check on the content or possibly the length. Because remember, all input from the user in Python comes in as a string. As I mentioned, so what in the string are we going to validate? Definitely content and length. Now, remember we had this discussion about um, methods and uh, we started to have a little bit of a conversation when we talked about random and math about libraries and objects. The string data type is an object within Python. Therefore, all objects in an object-oriented language have built-in methods and properties. So the lower and the upper are methods that come with the string data type. So what do those do? Lower basically just puts everything in the string in lowercase, and upper takes everything and puts it in uppercase. So what does this mean with input validation? When we ask the user, do you want to continue, enter yes or no, rather than looking for all the variations of yes and no, we can use um, the lower and the upper function to make it so at least we're looking at something that's all in one case. So here's an example. Uh, we have answer as a string, and what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user, do you want to validate the string, enter yes or no? So we're going to take whatever the answer is, and we're going to make it a lower case. So this is how we do it. And let's put that in some color here. Okay, using the lower. Now remember, when we're dealing with objects, if we want to tap into the um, a method or uh, anything else related to the ob object, we're always going to use that dot no case notation. So answer dot lower means we're tapping into the string object or the string class, specifically the lower method. So now how do we validate it? So now this makes it very easy. So while answer is not equal to yes and answer is not equal to no, then we prompt again. Okay, here is yet another way to validate a string, um, and, and in this case, we're going to use um, that pathway of truth method that I showed you guys in Raptor. So you can see here where we're asking the user to give us a yes or a no. We then convert it. Okay, so we ask for it. We store it in here. Then we take it, convert it to all lower, and reassign it. And then if some string is equal to yes or some string is equal to no, we turn our flag to true, we're good. If not, we ask the user for another value and we convert it and then we try all over again. So validating numbers, this is incredibly complicated in Raptor, more so than what it needs to be. And it's mostly because the only way to do it is to use a try-catch block. Um, validating numbers or positive numbers is a little easier because we'll use another string method. This is the, the is digit string method. But if we're looking at floats, positive or negative, or negative integers, we have to use this try catch block. So positive integers, this is the easy one. If you follow along, we're going to use the, the uh, pathway of truth method. So we're going to use flag. So we set flag equal to false. Now when we put false in our program in Python, just like you see it in Raptor, when we do it with a capital F, that actually sets it to the Boolean value false, not the string. So we're going to have positive num as an integer, positive string as a string. So we're going to ask the user for the number that we're storing in the string. So enter in your positive integer. Then we're going to validate it. So while flag is equal to false, if positive string dot is digit, so remember we're tapping into a method, is digit is the method. All that is digit does is um, tell us yes, it's a number, or no, it isn't. But it gets a little bit more specific than what is number does in Raptor and what is number does in most other languages. Because what is digit does is it takes a look at every item within the string and it looks to see if there's a letter in there. Now, here's the rub. If I enter in a negative 2, 2 is an integer, but it's a negative integer. 
What Python does is it takes a look at the minus sign that I type in next to the two, and it says, oh, this is a character. The whole thing's a character, meaning this is not a number. It does the same if we enter in a number with a comma. It does the same if we enter in a float. Once it hits the period, it says, oh, this is a character. That means the whole thing is a character. So is digit is great for doing positive integers only. So you can see here, if positive string dot is digit, all right, if it is a, a positive number or a positive integer, this will come back true. And therefore, we can then safely use our int function and take what's ever stored in the string, convert it to an integer. Set the flag true, and then I'm just printing out a cute little statement. Congratulations, you entered a number. Else, we're going to ask again, and once again, when we ask again, we're going to put it back into the string. End loop. So you can see this is actually a little more streamlined than what we did in, in, uh, uh, in Raptor. Okay, so how do we validate floats and negative integers? This is what gets a little more tricky um, because what we have to use is what's called a try-catch block, and you'll see that right here. Basically, the premise behind these, these things is what goes on in the code right here, okay? If anything makes the program want to stop, meaning an error gets raised, what will happen is as soon as that, that occurs, then the code stops to where the error is and immediately goes down to accept value error to look for more instructions. Uh, so let's follow along with the example so it makes a little sense. We still have our flag. We're looking for an integer. We have an integer and a string. We ask the user for our number. Okay, they put it into the string. Now we're into our loop. So what happens is that if I, in the process of converting some string to an integer, now this is in the case I want a negative value, or some, some int could be any type of integer, both positive or negative. In that process of converting, uh, when int goes to do its job, if it raises an error, in this case it would be a cast and exception error, then what happens is we leave this line of code altogether and head down to accept value error. And then from there, our, me our error message gets printed out to the screen and basically we loop around because false has not been changed yet. The flag has not been changed. So as long as the user gives us what, what, gives us what we want, the flag is true and then we print something out. Okay, so how do we validate a float? Much like the slide, the previous slide, what's going to happen is as soon as we enter into our try-catch block, once we try to take whatever is stored in the string and convert it to a float using the float function, if it raises any type of error, then the code, the compiler will hop to the accept value error line and look for further instructions. So if the user gives us a letter, or anything else, uh, then what will go out is the input message saying, sorry, you did not enter a floating point number. Please try again. All right, so how do we do positive floats? Now, this is where it gets a lot, yet a little more complicated. So you can see here in our variable declarations, we have a float and a string. Next line, we ask the user for that value, enter a, a positive floating point number, and they enter it. So now we're into our try-catch block. So we're right here as I'm reading the code and explaining it to you. We're right over here. Okay. So once again, much like the previous slides, if we're able to successfully convert, then we'll then check for if that number is positive with the next line, if pos float is greater than zero. If the user gives us a letter, then control in the program hops down to the line that reads accept value error, and then we ask the user again, and then we try the whole process all over again. However, if the user gives us a positive number, then our flag turns off and we go on. If they don't give us a positive number, meaning that we were successfully able to convert, however, the number is negative, then you'll see what happens underneath the else statement here. 
where we ask them again for another number. And then we go around again. So this is a combination of pathway of truth and using that try, accept, block. Now, dealing with strings, much like in Raptor, is so, 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 so easy um, because uh, using that, our lower and our upper methods, we're able to um, combine stuff a lot easier. So in this case here, we have our flag. Um, we have uh, some string. So I hope this has helped in your understanding of how to validate numbers and strings in Python. The next uh, and the final uh, video that you want to check out is the one that's going to show you how to do this in uh, Python. So the Python, dev, dev, the Python demo for input validation.